Hi everyone, my name is Alicia. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm back in my favorite place again in the kitchen. And I thought I would do a video about meal prepping for baby, like freezer meals. I am currently a little over 35 weeks. Usually with every child, I have two already. This is gonna be my third child. I usually do some type of meal prep, some freezer meals that we can just pull out and cook in the oven or throw into the crock pot to make things easier. So I'm going to do that again. I am starting a little later than normal. I usually try to start around the 30 to 32 week mark, but um, better late than never. So I will be, over the course of this week, I will be making a few meals here and there just so I don't have to be standing the whole time in my kitchen since I'm starting to get very uncomfortable. Any recipes that I make, I will be posting them in the description box below so that you can try them out yourself as well. And I hope you enjoy. I am going to show you how I make French toast. It is one of the easiest recipes and it's something my kids love, I love too, and if you can reheat it super fast in the toaster, I always do like a defrost setting first and then I kind of toast it the second time around and I'll leave that like in the instructions on how I do that. Um, but here are the ingredients. I'm gonna flip you around right now and show you how I make French toast. You're gonna need kind of like a whitish bowl to fit the bread. You're gonna start off with a quarter cup of flour in here I have a tablespoon of brown sugar and a tablespoon of regular white sugar, one cup of milk, three eggs, I have some cinnamon, some vanilla, some nutmeg, and then I have my bread. And I am using Texas toast since it's a little bit thicker and I don't want anything super flimsy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get everything into my bowl here, whisk it up, and I, oh, I don't know if I mentioned, I have butter for my electric skillet. And this fits about six slices, so this goes really, really quickly. One of the first things I'm gonna do is get my skillet warmed up. So I put it usually like on 300, because it gets pretty hot. Um, you could also do this on your stove, but this is like the easiest thing to do. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. So I'm gonna start off by preheating this, getting my butter ready. For, for six slices, I usually do like two to three tablespoons. So I'm just gonna get that prepped and cut. And then in here, we are going to add in the three eggs. And the thing with this recipe is because there's flour in the recipe, you always need to whisk it in between batches because the flour will just settle on the bottom and it'll make it like your bread all kind of uneven and chunky in some areas. My eggs are in here. I'm gonna whisk these really quick. All right, and then I'm adding in my one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of flour that's going in. Like I said, this is gonna this is a super fast recipe. And then we are going to add in the quarter cup of flour. That's going right in. Along with the one cup of milk. And I always use whole milk in recipes. And then I just always, 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 always eyeball the spices. So probably about a teaspoon of cinnamon, quarter to half teaspoon of nutmeg, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon, or sorry, nutmeg, a little bit of nutmeg. And then I'm gonna whisk this again, and then I'll bring you in closer to show you how I cook the French toast. It's nice and whisked up, and this is already hot, so I'm gonna add my butter in, and that's gonna start melting, and I will bring you in closer to show you how I do all this. So I ended up lowering the heat on my electric skillet because I forgot how hot this gets. So now I'm at around 200 and my butter is all melted and you can see it's kind of browning so I need to hurry up and get some stuff in here. I'm going to open up my bread and I'm going to pull six pieces. So that's how many I'm going to be able to fit in here for right now. So I have my six pieces right here. I'm going to give this one more whisk really quickly because we want to make sure it's all whisked up right before it goes in. And this is how we do it. 
we're going to turn the bread one time, transfer it over. Flip it, we're not like fully soaking. We don't want it to just sit in the milk mixture because it'll get super soggy that way. And all sides are saturated. Okay, I got six pieces in here. It only take a few minutes per side, and then I will show you when I flip it what it looks like. Oh, and I'm also gonna sprinkle a little bit more cinnamon on top. I'm gonna look at these right now and check the bottom, see how they're doing. It's been about three minutes, and they're ready to be flipped, so I'm going to flip them. And these are gonna get another three minutes. What we're gonna need right now also is a cooling rack to transfer the French toast to so that, cause my kids are gonna have some right now for breakfast, but the rest I'm freezing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make some room in the freezer so that I can put some cooling racks into the freezer and I'm gonna freeze the French toast like this. So I'm gonna let it cool down on the cooling rack right here on the counter, and then I'm going to transfer it to the freezer and let it fully freeze. And then that usually it's, it goes pretty quick, like maybe an hour. But then I'll bring them out and I'll roll them in wax paper and then put them into gallon freezer bags. And I will show you how I do that too. This has been on for about three to four minutes. I'm gonna check it real quick on the bottom here and they're done. So I'm going to move them over. We'll get the other batch ready to go. I'm adding in the two tablespoons of butter. Like I said, this goes really quickly. And then we are needing to whisk this mixture once again because the flour is going to settle on the bottom. Move my butter all around. Again, one more little whisk. And I have my six, my six pieces of Texas toast ready right here to go in. Here we go. And I'm gonna do another sprinkling of cinnamon on one side. Remember it is in the, the egg mixture already, so, but we like cinnamon around here. About three minutes for this side, flip it, three to four minutes on the other side. And I think I have enough of that milk egg mixture to make two more slices. I'm going to, because I don't want to waste anything. So I'm just going to use about half a tablespoon of butter in here now, because I only have two slices. And again, I'm going to whisk, whisk up that mixture. Yep, just enough for two. I'm kind of like getting down to the bottom down here, if you can see. But I am not wasting anything. There we go. In fact, I might just pour the rest of this a little bit on the top. I was able to make 14 slices of French toast. That's nearly the entire loaf of bread that I was able to use. I still have a couple slices in here. So I was able to get 14 slices. If you're trying to do more for your family, obviously double the recipe and then have two uh, loaves of the Texas toast. But here is what they all look like. These are just finishing up right now. So now I have these on two cooling racks and I'm going to transfer them to the freezer to let them freeze fully before wrapping them and putting them into freezer bags. And you want them on cooling racks and not really cookie sheets because you want the air to get underneath because you want the bottom to be frozen too before you wrap them. So that's why I like using the cooling racks. So just so I'm going to transfer these once they are fully cooled down and then I will show you how I wrap them up. I just pulled my French toast out of the freezer. They are completely frozen. So what I'm going to do now is I have just regular wax paper and I have one long strip. I'm going to roll a few, I think I can get two, maybe three in one long strip and then place it inside of a freezer bag that is labeled. So you start here and you cover it 
you do one roll and you place another frozen one right on top of it. Roll that. Another frozen one right on top and we roll it until we get all the way to the end, like that. And we just fold the ends over and it kind of makes like this fat little sandwich. And then we're going to place it into our freezer bag. And now I'll be able to get three more stacks of French toast in here. reheat these is I stick them in the toaster. On my toaster there's a defrost button. So for one slice of French toast, I will do a setting on three for defrost. And then once it's defrosted, I will flip it over. Like I will take it out of the toaster, flip it to the other side so the other side will get warmed. And then I like cook it, I toast it on a, a setting of two, if that makes sense. These come out so good. They can't, and when you defrost them and reheat them, they come out tasting exactly the same as if you just cooked them that morning, which is why I love these. And it's so fast and you can add whatever toppings you want. We like berries. We like doing strawberries and blueberries, or you could do like a banana peanut butter French toast would be really, really good too. But I highly recommend doing this for any type of meal prep, whether you're having a baby or not, because this is perfect for those, even those fast weekends when sports happen for kids or any type of like quick day trips you're trying to do, just throwing one of these in the toaster, it's very quick, so I highly recommend this. One of my favorite things to freeze is chili, so I'm gonna be making a big batch of chili, and for this I, you will need the Carol Shelby's Chili Kit, some kidney beans, pinto beans, white beans, and tomatoes. Usually need like three um, 14 ounce cans, so I have a 28 ounce and one 14 ounce. Some tomato sauce. And then for vegetables, I like to use onion, um, garlic, bell peppers. I'm using orange and yellow. I know usually you see like green and red, but I love the taste of these. And then celery, I have four ribs here. And then I'm just throwing in some carrots because I had carrots in my fridge that I needed to use up. So this is all we'll need and some water. And then I think I have about five tablespoons of butter that I'm gonna saute the vegetables in. So now I'm just gonna cut up all my veggies and get them sauteed. I'm excited that this baby is coming like right before fall starts. Babies due September 13th. I have a feeling it's gonna be like a few weeks before that though, or like a week before that. But Chili is like our, my favorite fall food and I don't know if, I don't think I've ever frozen cornbread. Well, I make my own cornbread and um, we always finish it so I've never had a chance to freeze it. I'm gonna look and see if I am able to freeze cornbread because that would be very helpful for like a complete like meal um, so that we could just kind of pull it out and let it defrost. But I'm, right now I'm going to chop all this stuff up. I always eat, keep the produce bags whenever I go um, grocery shopping so that I can use it as a, like a little trash bag so I, everything just gathers and I throw it away. way on some YouTube tutorial is cutting the tops off and then kind of like going around in the circle to make a long strip but I've also seen where you just like cut straight down so I don't know whatever is easiest to cut Now I'm gonna 
to cut up my onion. I'm not using the whole onion. I think I'm just going to use half of it and then save the other half. Are some strong onions. Oh my goodness. These are strong. Alright, now time to dice. Let's hurry this up. Oh my goodness. I am dying. These are strong. Holy cow. I'm glad I'm only using half. These are really, really strong. Okay. Can you see me? I'm crying. Okay. Now I am going to. The, the garlic is going to go last, so I think. What I'll do right now is just get my, I forgot to mention, I'm also including some ground beef, because this is, this cannot just be a vegetarian chili. There's no way. So I'm making a ground beef chili. I am going to saute up my ground beef. This is about, it's 1.34 pounds. I'm gonna saute it up in here. I'm gonna drain the fat, and then I'm gonna saute the vegetables. Now that my ground beef is all browned up, I am going to drain it. So I have a little colander with a bowl right here. I'm just gonna dump it in so I don't have any fat in here. There will be some fat from the butter from the vegetables, so don't worry about that if you're wanting fat in here. Butter is going in, and I always use a new spoon because I am always worried about things cross-contaminating, so new spoon coming up. All right, onions are going in first. Ooh, that is a ton of vegetables. And that is okay with me. All right, so I'm gonna let this saute down for about five minutes. So they're a little soft. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to let it simmer on the stove when everything is put together but I do want them a little bit soft. So about five minutes. I did not forget about my garlic. I chopped up two rather large cloves of garlic and they are coming in around the four minute mark. Inside the chili kit of Carol Shelby's chili kit, you get some masa, some cayenne powder, and some spices. Now, I'm, a friend told me a long time ago to throw away the masa and use the, just the chili seasoning. And the, I'm gonna use about half of this cayenne because it is pretty spicy, but we, we like a little bit of spice around here. Then I include the chili seasoning here now. All right, so this has been cooking now for about six minutes. And now I'm gonna start adding in my liquid and other beans. So I'm going to add in my first large can of tomatoes with the juices, the second smaller can. So remember you can use either three cans of 14 ounces or a large 28 ounce can and one 14 ounce can, however you wanna do it. And I was trying to find the one with the Italian seasoning, but there was just the plain one, so that was totally fine. And then I'm going to add in an eight ounce can of tomato sauce, my drained ground beef. Ground beef is in. The kidney, the white, and the pinto beans, I rinsed them in a colander. Now they are going in. And what I was thinking is I probably could have just added in another can of beans because of how much meat there is, because I usually just use a pound of ground beef. But because there's so much meat in here now, I probably could have done another can of like kidney beans probably. And now I'm going to add in some water. I'm probably gonna do about two, I'm gonna look at how much two cans of water will get me. So let's try that. So I am adding in half a can. So now I've done two and a half cans of water. And this is gonna give me two meals worth for our family. I've been letting this simmer for 20 minutes, but I'm still gonna let it simmer for another hour and a half. And then I'm gonna let it cool down, and I'm gonna transfer it to probably a gallon bag, 
So oh, they don't take up as much room in my freezer so I can stand them up. Some great toppings would be cheddar cheese, Frito chips would be good, green onions. We, me and my husband, we always add extra hot sauce to ours. Sour cream, of course. Tortilla chips on the side. And like I said, I'm gonna look into freezing cornbread because if I can freeze cornbread, I'm gonna make it. And if that's true, I will include it in this video. freezer meal recipe. Today I am making lasagna. I About a few months ago when I started feeling better in my pregnancy, I was craving lasagna and I was searching the internet and I found probably the best recipe for lasagna that I've ever had. And I think it is, his name is Chef John. I will post that link of, of course in the description, but it was the best tasting lasagna. We had it for a few days in a row because it was so large. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the batch as it calls for and I'm going to separate it and make two smaller lasagnas for the freezer. But my boys loved it, it was really easy to make and I'll show you how I do it. In Chef John's video he says to have the pan cold when you add in your meat so I'm not heating this up. I'm going to be adding 1.3, one pound three ounces of Italian sweet sausage to the pan along with 1.34 pounds of ground beef and I'm gonna brown it all up. browning right now. I forgot to buy mushrooms, so I'm just foregoing those this time. Also, I didn't buy enough marinara. I have one jar of Rayos, and this is 28 ounces, and I need at least three more cups, because there's three cups in here. So I'm gonna make my own marinara sauce. I'm just doing whatever I have. I didn't plan great, obviously, so I in my pantry I have some peeled tomatoes, I'm gonna be adding in some tomato paste, some garlic, onions, and some seasoning just to make my own marinara sauce. I'm gonna combine it all, and I'm gonna let that all simmer on the stove. And into my food processor, I am putting the 28 ounces of peeled tomatoes, right in here. Adding in six ounces of tomato paste. I cut up some onion and some garlic and chopped up some parsley as well. So in goes that. If I can see what I'm doing. Short girl problems. I'm always on my tippy toes whenever I'm in the kitchen. I'm not super short, but I'm not super tall. And my I feel like my counters are really tall for some reason. Some oregano. Probably like close to two teaspoons of oregano. And I'm just gonna blend it up. And that looks really, really good. So now I'm gonna combine this marinara sauce that I just made with the Rayos and put it into the meat mixture on the stove. I did drain some of the fat already. I think he does it like near the end of the cooking process, like when you add the marinara. But I wanted to just do it right now so I didn't lose any of the juices from the marinara sauce. So I just um, got a lot of the fat out already. I'm adding salt, I'm adding some ground pepper, and then I'm also going to add in some red pepper flakes. Probably like a teaspoon. Now I'm gonna be adding in the marinara sauce. Here we go, the can of marinara, or the jar of marinara, I should say. I'm gonna add my homemade marinara that I just made. Here we go. I think I need to add about, I think it says half a cup or a cup to, of water to this. It would smell so good. And we're gonna let this simmer. He does it for two minutes or two hours. I'm gonna do it for like an hour. Cause I did that last time. I didn't let it sit the whole time. And it was bomb. It was still so good. 
so an hour I think will be just fine. Getting that, walk, that half a cup of water out of the, this jar, so I'm just putting water in here. My meat mixture is cooling down on the stove. It's been simmering for about, probably close to an hour and a half. I'm gonna start making the filling, and I have two eggs in here. I'm gonna just kind of mix that up just a little bit. And then I'm going to be adding in 32 ounces, which is two pounds of ricotta, the whole milk ricotta. And I actually have the ricotta out on the counter for a little bit to help soften it so that when I smooth it over the noodles, it's not gonna be like rough to spread. I grated some Parmigiano Reggiano and some mozzarella. He does not use the, the block mozzarella. I am for the, the filling inside so that I can use the fresh mozzarella to dot the top with. So that's what I'm doing. So I grated about eight ounces of mozzarella cheese from the block. And I have some chopped parsley. So I'm gonna add all this into this bowl here. I'm gonna actually mix some of this up. And I'm also gonna add in some nutmeg because I've read that adding nutmeg to a filling brings like more depth the flavor and just a little sprinkling of nutmeg is coming in here just a tiny tiny bit that probably wasn't even like an eighth of a teaspoon okay and then I'm gonna get my noodles cooked up and then I am going to start layering all of the, the filling and the meat mixture and the noodles I forgot I am also going to be adding in some salt about a teaspoon of salt and then some black pepper I have my one pound of noodles boiling here in water for about eight to nine minutes and then I'm gonna transfer them to a pot of cool or cold water to let them sit in there while I begin layering everything. Timer just went off. I'm going to transfer the noodles into this bowl of cool water. You wouldn't change me. You got the same old thoughts be my All right, they're all in here. And now we're gonna start layering. Here is my setup I have going. I have my noodles, my marinara sauce, and my filling. Then I have my cheese over here that I'm gonna put on top. And these are, it's nine by nine by almost three inches poultry pans. So I'm hoping they are, will work fine for, for this because I've never separated them before. I've only made one large, like 15 by 10. So hopefully this works. I'm going to give this a try here. I'm going to put some meat sauce down. Debating if I should do both of them at once or if I should just do one to experiment and see how it goes. I don't know. Okay, and I do have a lot of meat sauce, so I am going to make sure there is enough down here. So meat sauce first and then noodles. Now these are pretty big. I'm debating if I should cut them. Hmm, no, I think I'm just going to keep them. Okay, so I'm gonna do one, two, two, three. Sure, let's try that. And then I am putting some of the cheese mixture right up here. And I'm gonna get a spatula. You know what, I'm wondering if I should just start doing the other one just so I know how many layers I can do. Cause I thought I could only do two layers of noodles in here, but I might be able to do three layers of noodles. But I don't know how much I'll have. So I do think I'm gonna start building the other one right now too. Okay, let me try doing the other side real quick. I used to think I had plenty of dreams and light in my life. Okay, now I'm gonna put meat sauce again on top of both. The noodles are gonna be going the opposite direction here. So I turned the pan, so now the noodles are going this way. But now you're in my life. We're far away from the city lights, so small And I am using the rest of the cheese 
which means that I have only one layer left of the noodles and then the meat. And I'm wondering if I didn't put enough meat sauce, because I, I do have a lot of meat sauce. I definitely could have put more on the bottom and on uh, the layers in between. So actually, I think because of how much meat sauce I have left, I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm going to do just a little bit more meat sauce on top of this cheese filling, then put my noodles on and then put more meat sauce on top. Just so I don't, I'm not wasting any more meat filling. All right, last layer of noodles is going the opposite direction. So I'm turning this again, just so I remember. Noodles going down. And this is the first box I've ever had where the noodles aren't all broken, which is pretty amazing. Okay, so then this is gonna get turned. There we go. How many more noodles do I have left in here? I have one, I have two noodles left. And I can, I can make it work. Let's make it work. I'm gonna scoot. Do a little scoochy scooch on these things so I don't have to waste anything. There we go. This one's a little damaged, but it is oh, okay. There we go. And now the rest of my meat sauce is going on top. I'm gonna try tucking these little guys in here. I'm gonna see what we could do. Just so they don't dry out on the outside. They're probably not gonna work. Okay, I used up all the sauce. Perfect, okay. And now I'm gonna sprinkle some more Parmigiano Reggiano on top and then dot it with fresh mozzarella that I have right here. I'm just gonna kind of place it all over. So I ended up rolling some under. I don't think they're gonna stay just because of how rubbery the noodles are. They're gonna kind of just come back up. But as long as some of them are down so they don't dry out, I think it'll be fine. Okay, now I'm gonna add the cheese. All right, cheese is going down. And I'm not going to measure it because I don't like measuring things. And I don't want too much because this stuff is some powerful cheese here. And now I'm going in with a fresh mozzarella and I'm dotting it. Now I'm gonna cover this with some heavy duty foil. I'm probably gonna wrap it up twice actually just to make sure it doesn't dry out in the freezer. And then I will put the instructions on there. I'm thinking I need to do a full defrost whenever we wanna take these out for 24 hours and then bake it for at 375 for 50 minutes, but I will write that down whenever I find out what I need to do. Cause like I said, I don't do lasagna often, so I will let you know. Silly baby, dance the night away. I'll kick my shoes up if I want. Let yourself be free and maybe you will find that there is more to life than being pretty Honey, let's just face it You can do better Let me show you what a good time looks like You can do better So much better mm -hmm. I don't think Day three of freezer cooking and today I'm going to be doing chicken enchiladas I haven't decided if I wanted to do like a creamy chicken or a cheesy chicken. So I guess we'll just go along and see what I end up doing. But I am gonna start off with cooking some chicken breast in the Instant Pot and then I'm also gonna start by making my enchilada sauce. And this enchilada sauce recipe that I've been using, I've been using it for years, I kind of tweak it and modify it to make it my own, but I will be linking that recipe for the original and then adding in what I do into the description box. So for my chicken, I have two fairly large chicken breasts in here. They are defrosted 
But if you have frozen chicken breast, you can definitely still do this in the Instant Pot. I just think it takes a few more minutes longer, which is pretty much nothing. And then I'm going to be adding in about half a cup of chicken broth, and then I'm making like my own Mexican spice mix of garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, oregano, and some cumin. And I'm just gonna be sprinkling that over the chicken breast. Chicken has been seasoned. I'm gonna add the salt and pepper whenever I shred it, but I'm gonna put the lid on right now. And I'm gonna make sure that the knob on the very top up here is on sealing. And then I am doing pressure cook, and I'm gonna keep it at 12 minutes. And that's it. And then once it's done, I will let it, the pressure release naturally, meaning I'm not going to move this this knob to venting. I'm just gonna let it release by itself. To make this enchilada sauce, I'm actually doubling the recipe, and like I said, I'm adding some other things to it. So, because I'm doubling the recipe, I'm gonna be doing um, four tablespoons, or a quarter cup of flour, and four tablespoons of, I'm using vegetable oil for this. So, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And I might add in more oil depending on how the paste looks because we're trying to create like a roux for this. So I'm gonna let this heat up for a second and then I'm gonna add in my flour. This should be pretty warm. I have it on a six right now, let's see. Here it goes, yep. So we kind of want it bubbling a little bit. And I'm adding my flour in. I'm gonna start whisking it and I'm gonna take a look I actually think I added the perfect amount of oil in here, so it looks good to me. And I'm gonna let this flour cook down because you do not want this tasting of flour. So we're gonna cook the flour. And then in the recipe, it calls for garlic powder, but I'm actually gonna use fresh garlic. I, used a, I uh, minced up a large clove. So I'm gonna be adding it in in about 30 seconds. All right, it's been 30 seconds. I'm adding in my garlic that I just minced. You can use the, the garlic powder if you want. I just always find that this tastes just a little bit better. There's more depth to it for sure with the fresh garlic. And I had it. So I mean, if you don't have it, it's totally not a big deal. And I'm gonna let this cook. And now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually add the seasonings to the flour. So I'll let like I'll kind of like saute the seasoning in here before adding in our liquid. And I'm gonna lower this heat just a little bit on about four and a half to five. So I am now adding in some chili powder. And like I said, I was doubling the recipe, but what I found works the best is doubled would be eight tablespoons of chili powder. But I'm just gonna do five tablespoons, so just an extra tablespoon. Now remember, this is chili powder. This is not like spicy. This is not gonna give you any heat. It's cayenne that gives you that heat. So do not worry about it being spicy. I know it's a lot of chili powder in there, but that is not what will give you that, that, that heat. Stir this around just a little bit. Just to make sure my garlic doesn't burn. It's still kind of, I'm gonna lower just a little bit. Now I'm gonna be adding in some onion powder, probably about a teaspoon. Add in some oregano, a teaspoon again, and some cumin. And that's gonna be a teaspoon also. And I'm just gonna kind of heat up the spices down here, like almost give it a toasted flavor, even though it's super, it's on super low heat at this point. So I am going to be using three cups of chicken broth to this. Here's one. And I'm gonna whisk this up to make, cause then the, the seasonings are gonna start clumping up. So after I add in that one cup, I'm going to start whisking it. I'm gonna let this one cup of chicken broth heat up. Now I like adding in a tablespoon of tomato paste and I freeze my tomato paste whenever I don't use the whole can and I freeze it in tablespoons and then I just wrap it in wax paper and keep it in a Ziploc bag. 
Whenever I make Salisbury steak, I only use a few tablespoons for the sauce. And then I throw away the can and then it's so wasteful. So I've just been, you can see, this is tomato paste, this is a tablespoon. And you kind of just put it on a cookie sheet on the wax paper to freeze. And then you just move it into your Ziploc bag. So I am adding, and this is perfect because then I get to use all the tomato paste for my enchilada sauce. Using one tablespoon of tomato paste in here and I want it to melt. So that's why I don't really want to add the rest of my liquid yet because I want to make sure this tomato paste really melts. And that tomato paste has melted, only took a couple minutes. Now I'm gonna add in the rest of my liquid. So I already had the one cup of chicken broth. I'm gonna add two more cups of chicken broth in here. Two. Three, and then I'm going to add a cup of water. But if you still have chicken broth left over, just use the rest of your chicken broth. If you only have like a half a cup of chicken broth left, just use it and then add a half cup of water. I still have a little bit of chicken broth in here and I'm not planning on using it today. So I'm just gonna use the rest. So that gives me about three quarter cups. I'm just gonna fill the rest up with water. So here's my full cup of liquid. It was three quarter cups of chicken broth, a quarter cup of water. I'm gonna add that in. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. That was my husband. He is a PE teacher. He has to Zoom with his students and he's today he's been going outside to do like some physical activity. So we come through here. Being kind of silly. Alright, now that I added all of my liquid, I am gonna be adding in I have eight ounces of tomato sauce. I'm going to be only adding in three quarters of this can. So what that measures out to, I'm honestly not sure. It might be what? Three quarters of a cup? I don't know. But I'm only adding in three quarters of the can. And then I'm adding in a teaspoon, just a teaspoon of white sugar. And that's just going to help with the acidity of the tomato sauce and the tomato paste. That's the only reason, I'm not trying to get this sweet. All right, I have my teaspoon of sugar, adding that in, giving this another whisk. Okay, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper. Not too much salt because there's a lot of seasoning going on in here, but just a little bit of salt. And I always keep my kosher salt, I use kosher salt by the way. I always keep it in a little ramekin like this so it's easy access but just a little bit of salt and then pepper. And I'm gonna let this simmer on the stove for about 30 minutes. And it's gonna be so, and this is always so good. Okay, just gonna let this simmer down. Okay, so this is done, the little button went down. There it is, and now I'm going to shred this chicken and I'm gonna actually use a handheld mixer to shred it. It is so easy, I'm gonna show you how I do that. cheese is all grated I'm going to start prepping the chicken and getting the tortillas warmed up I'm gonna use flour tortillas but you can totally use corn tortillas and fry them up if you want I'm just gonna use flour because it'll be easier but I'm going to add some of my enchilada sauce to the chicken and add a little bit of cheese to the chicken and I did let my enchilada sauce cool down a little bit because I am going to be freezing this right away so I'm gonna pour some enchilada sauce in here. And I left the liquid that came for off the chicken and the chicken broth, I left that in here. Okay, and I'm gonna mix this up. Cause I don't want it super dry. And now I'm gonna add in some cheese. And I'm gonna add a little bit of both. And 
And I could have added the cheese like just directly to the tortilla and when, I was, when I'm rolling it, but this is just gonna be way easier. Now I'm just gonna heat up my tortillas. I have two burners going here. I'm just gonna warm them up. And I'm not totally gonna be toasting the tortillas. I just want them warm and pliable so that I can roll them without them breaking. And then I'm just replacing it with a fresh tortilla just to make things go faster. Smoked your dead cigarettes. Dreamt of a life in a big town. Skyscrapers and neon lights. So yesterday I was using those nine by nine by three inch poultry pans and I'm gonna do the same thing with these. I'm thinking I'll be able to do seven and seven enchiladas. I'm going to start by putting a little bit of enchilada sauce down and then I'm going to do the rolling over here. I have everything set up over here. All right, so I have my warm tortillas right here and I'm gonna start, got a spoon. And I'm going to start by putting just a little bit. I don't want too much filling because it'll come out the sides. I'm going to place it on one end. Then I'm just going to roll it. And then I'm going to place it down. And I should be able to get seven here. So let's just keep going. I'm able to fit seven in here. So now I'm gonna do the other pin. Alright, down goes the enchilada sauce. Make sure the uh, the top is uh, fully covered first and then go down along the sides because remember we just put a little bit of sauce on the bottom and now when you go down along the sides it'll totally get the bottom filled up sorry that is my dog every time ring goes off he lets us know he's like our little guard dog i don't even know why we have ring when we have him all of the sauce is on and that is why we double this we need the sauce and you guys once you taste the sauce you're gonna realize that you need more sauce. <laughs> it is so good. Now for the cheese. To freeze these, I'm going to get some heavy duty foil and I'm gonna wrap them up twice. I just finished baking two dozen blueberry muffins minus like four because some people wanted some muffins right now but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna freeze these on this cookie cooling rack and then I will wrap them individually in a plastic wrap and then fit as many as I can flat in a gallon freezer bag and these will be perfect for like a quick breakfast or a quick snack or even a quick dessert they'll defrost super fast welcome to day I don't even know day 80 82 of this freezer meal video I am attempting today to finish all of my freezer meals so I can be done with it I think I have maybe two, maybe three more things to put in my freezer. And one of them is the freezer breakfast sandwiches. They um, will have egg, they're on a, on a English muffin with either sausage or Canadian bacon and some cheese. So I'm making that. I also need to make some cornbread muffins for the chili that I made last week, I think. Um, so just so we would have a complete meal all in the freezer and then the last thing I need to make is a chicken broccoli cheddar like casserole um, I think I made this actually with my 
first? I can't remember. But I think I've made this before. So I'm gonna do it again and then I will be done. At least I hope I am done because I am running out of room. And I'll also show you when I'm completely done what my freezers look like afterwards. So right now I'm gonna start working on the freezer breakfast sandwiches. I need to get the eggs cooked and everything prepped. Here are the ingredients I'm gonna be needing for those breakfast sandwiches. There's some sausage patties that I'm gonna cook up really quick. I have, I'm using cheddar cheese. I'm sure you could use whatever cheese you like. Canadian bacon. I have 12 English muffins. The recipe calls for 12 eggs. I just don't think that's enough. So I'm just gonna add two more. So I have 14 eggs. And then I'm gonna be using heavy whipping cream for my milk instead of regular milk because I wanna use it before it goes bad. And uh, if you could hear in the background, I'm preheating my oven at 325 because I'm going to be baking my egg and milk mixture in a 13 by 9 inch dish. And what I'm thinking also is toasting the English muffins. It doesn't say to do that, but I feel like it would be more rubbery if I didn't give them some type of barrier, like some type of hardness to them, like to protect the eggs and everything else whenever I put it together. So I'm gonna like lightly toast it, maybe like on a one or a two. So I am starting by greasing my 13 by nine inch dish with some cooking spray, setting that aside, and I'm gonna crack all 12 eggs into this Pyrex bowl and then adding in my milk or heavy whipping cream. some salt, black pepper, and I'm gonna whisk in my uh, heavy cream. Debris hiding up in there. I am going to take my egg mixture, pour it in here, whoops, and then I'm gonna bake it for 18 minutes. It says not to overcook it because when you reheat it later, when you pull them out of the freezer, you don't want it to be super rubbery and overcooked. Into the oven it goes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fry up the six sausage patties in here. And I'm actually going to flatten them out more because they're kind of thick and I want them to be able to spread more across the English muffin. And then I'm going to toast some English muffins whenever I get these frying. If you guys ever see me put foil back here, it is because my stove top is totally uneven and it cooks everything unevenly. So I have to put something back here to raise it up in the back. Super tacky, but it works until we are able to one day get a new stove top. So I'm gonna flatten these out and placing them in there. These for about 10 minutes, I think. And then I'm gonna get started on the English muffins over here. I think a one setting is good. They're pretty, because they're kind of thin already. So you can see the back compared to one that hasn't been toasted yet, it is a little bit darker. So I think I'm just gonna keep all of them on the one setting. While everything is frying up, I am cutting 12 wax paper squares to wrap the sandwiches in. Here are the eggs. I actually cooked them closer to 22 minutes only because I added those extra eggs and I think they were larger eggs too. So there's still a little wobble on the top, but they need to sit and um, cool down completely before I'm able to cut them. I have my sausage patties right now on some paper towels just to blot off all the excess grease and these need to cool down as well. But everything is ready to assemble. This is cooled down. I'm going to cut it into 12 squares. So it'll be one, two, three cuts, and then one, two cuts that way. So cut it in half first, 
and then cut those halves in half. Here is one toasted English muffin, and it goes egg first. I'm gonna get an egg, place that on the bottom, then put a sausage patty on top of that, and then a slice of cheddar cheese is going right on top of that. And there we go, this is how it's gonna look. It does look really good. And see how thick that egg is? I wanted a thicker egg, so I'm so glad that I added those extra eggs in. So I'm just going to wrap it in the wax paper and label it. And we parted, back to back we would carry on then. We'd do anything for what we started. But this time we could break. to work on the Canadian bacon. Egg first, Canadian bacon, and then a slice of cheese. And I'm thinking I might add, I have extra Canadian bacon, so I think I'm gonna do two slices. Okay, I'm gonna do Canadian bacon, egg, Canadian bacon, and then cheese. Ooh, it looks good. These are mine, for sure. Back to back we would carry on it. Do anything for what we started But this time we could break I'm running dry Everything's the same We'll try tonight But this time we're not safe and sound Not safe and sound What if I'm no good for you? What if you're no good for me? start working on the cornbread muffins and I decided to do muffins just because I think that would freeze better than like a 8 by 8 square in the in the freezer I guess I could slice it into little squares but I think the muffins will just be better so I'm going to work on that right now so for this recipe I've been using it for several years now and everyone loves it People say it's not like an official cornbread recipe because there's sugar in it, but it tastes good to us and we like it. So the first step is using buttermilk and I never have buttermilk so I make my own buttermilk and you do so by using about a tablespoon or two tablespoons of white vinegar. I fill the rest up with milk and I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes and then I will go on with the rest of my recipe. What I love about this recipe is that it can be all made in one pot. So everything will get mixed together and then transferred into the little muffin tins. It'll all be just one dish, which is why I love it. So what we do is we start off with one stick of butter. So half cup of butter, we're gonna melt it. And then we're gonna add in two thirds cup of sugar and we're gonna whisk it really good. So I'm just gonna let this melt down. I let my butter cool down for just a little bit. I'm gonna be adding in the two third cups of sugar right now. And I'm gonna whisk this. And the reason you want your butter just like a little cooled down is because we're gonna add in the eggs and you don't want the eggs to be scrambled. See what I usually do, and I'm gonna do it right now, is I add just a little bit of that buttermilk that's been sitting. I'm just gonna add like a couple of teaspoons just to cool it down even more before adding the eggs. So you can kind of see my milk has kind of curdled a little bit, just like it would for buttermilk really thick. So I'm gonna add like, I don't know, a couple teaspoons maybe of my milk just to cool it down. And then I'm gonna whisk in the two eggs. And now I'm going to add in all of that buttermilk. Now that my buttermilk is incorporated, I'm going to be adding half a teaspoon of baking soda, and then half a teaspoon of salt. Probably actually less because I use salted butter, so I'm just gonna do a quarter teaspoon of salt. One cup of cornmeal is going in. I'm gonna mix this first before adding in my flour just so there's less lumps. 
And I always use a spouted pot whenever I make this, just so it comes out into the dishes, easy, or like the baking dish easier. Less of a mess, especially because I'm gonna be using a muffin tin today. One cup of flour going in. And just a little tip on cornmeal. I don't use it all the time. Um, but I keep it in my freezer because I am always nervous about like little bugs or gnats getting into my box because years and years ago when I lived in an apartment with my husband right after we got married, I remember looking in the cornbread box that I had and there was like little bugs in that and it freaked me out and it has still haunted me ever since, so now I keep all my rice along with the cornmeal. For whatever reason, my flour is always good. If I had a lot of freezer space, I would keep my flour in there too, but I, I just stick the whole box just like this right in to the freezer and I've never had any issues with it rising or you know like going flat or anything, so I totally recommend doing that. All right, now I'm just gonna pour this into my muffin tin. I am going to spray these muffin tins with some spray. There we go, and you could use liners. I'm not gonna use liners for these. I'm just gonna wrap them really well. So let me see how much, how many muffins I can get out of this batter. Get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time. Doesn't sound like fun. You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like You can do better, so much better mm -hmm. I don't fit to you I'm gonna go into a 375 degree oven for, I'm gonna check them at like 18 minutes I think. Cornbread muffins are done. So this was 375 at 18 minutes exactly and they look great. I'm just gonna let them cool in here. The cornbread muffins have cooled and now I'm going to pop them out and I'm going to wrap them individually in some plastic wrap. Here's what they look like. They look really good. And then we will just defrost them on the counter as needed whenever we have our um, chili. Pretty, honey, let's just face it. You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better, so much better. I'm going to attempt to get 12 of the muffins in here. I'm not sure if it will fit, but I'm certainly gonna try. And I was able to get all 12 in here. Probably could have fit four more if I needed to, but that's all I had, so that is perfect. Yay. So I'm doubling this recipe, so I am using one stick of butter. I'm gonna melt it down, and then I'm gonna add in Dijon, some Worcestershire sauce, some brown sugar, and garlic powder. I'm just gonna start adding my stuff in now. Everything will melt together. So I'm gonna do four tablespoons, because I'm doubling, of brown sugar. I'm gonna do six tablespoons of Worcestershire, Worcestershire? I don't know how you say it. Everyone has issues saying it. So six tablespoons. Four tablespoons of Dijon, and I'm running out of, oop, of this one, so I'm gonna have to get some more here in a sec. So I think I have one in there. Here's two, three, four is good. And then about a teaspoon of onion powder. And then I'm just gonna do half with poppy seeds cause my husband can't have poppy seeds. Otherwise, if I was, I would add poppy seeds to this mixture. Okay, so I am making these in 13 by nine by three inch uh, foil pan. In Costco they come 30, what did I say, 32 rolls. So I, me and my husband ate four right now. And I'll have four extra left over from this one. But right now I'm gonna cut these in half with a serrated knife. Okay, bottom half is going in and then I will take the top off, just like that. So my family likes ham and cheese, so I'm gonna do cheddar and ham on this. I'm debating. So I got six slices on here and now for the ham. I don't know if 
I should add extra cheese. Dan, do you want extra cheese on this? Hubby said more cheese. So we're doing it. All right, so I have a cheese layer, ham, and then another cheese layer. I'm gonna flip my bread back over on top, just the way I cut it. I let my butter mixture cool a little bit, but I'm gonna do just half of this butter mixture over on the top because the other half will be for the other pan of sliders. Okay, that's about half I'd say. I'm just gonna smooth it out. If you've never had these, you are missing out. They are delicious and so quick to make. Okay, and then on half of these, I'm just gonna put some poppy seeds. I'll make the other one right now. different outfits because I am determined to finish my freezer recipes today. And the only thing I have left to do is the cheddar chicken broccoli pasta recipe. And I'm gonna finish it right now. It is gonna be super simple to make and put together. I have two fairly large chicken breasts in here. The recipe calls for three, but these are pretty big. I'm gonna sprinkle some garlic powder and some onion powder and then I'm going to add maybe actually a cup of water because this needs liquid and then I will cook it on high pressure for eight minutes. The chicken is in. I'm going to pressure cook it for eight minutes on high and then it's going to go and that's it and then I will shred it once it is done. Clearly, I had to step away for a little bit and it's been sitting here now for a long time. But the pin dropped, obviously, it is ready. It's still hot, so I'll still be able to shred it. And I think I'm gonna use some of this chicken broth, even though I made my own chicken broth right now, um, for part of the recipe. This wasn't a mistake and we can go old if you love me again, my friend. Salt and pepper is going in, some kosher salt. Not too much salt, because I am adding some like cheddar cheese soup or cheddar soup or something. Black pepper. And now on my stove, I'm getting water boiling so I can cook my penne pasta. I'm gonna cook both boxes. So one pound of broccoli is coming right in. And then I am putting in two cans of condensed cheddar cheese soup. For weeks, thought the love wasn't for me. No, still think of you. Okay, now just waiting on the pasta. I am going to grate three cups of cheddar cheese. Pasta is done. I'm going to stick it in here. I hope I have enough room in here. It looks like a lot of pasta. You know, it doesn't call for it, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to add a can of cream of chicken soup in here just to make sure that I don't lose a ton of moisture whenever I go to thaw it and then bake it. Because I still have a little bit more pasta to add in here. Yeah, I think I am. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a can of cream of chicken. Cream of chicken soup is gonna come in. Okay, now I'm going to portion this out into some foil pans. So I have two 13 by nine by two inch foil pans. This time is different, so this I'm 
gonna top it off with cheddar cheese on both. It was years ago, but how can I forget? We were 16 up all night. Love and heartbreak was our life. And here is everything in all its glory. I pulled things out of the freezer just to show you. So up here, I just made the broccoli cheddar chicken pasta. And then the second one is on the other side down there. I have French toast the blueberry streusel muffins. I have two lasagnas, two chicken enchiladas, sausage breakfast sandwiches, and then the Canadian bacon breakfast sandwiches, two bags of chili, cornbread muffins to go with it, and then ham and cheese sliders. Lots of work, but it'll be well worth it. In the end, it always is, because then I don't have to think about anything. My husband doesn't have to think about what's for dinner or breakfast or snacks or anything. So we are all set and I am officially done cooking. We are looking at my indoor freezer right now that's attached to my fridge and I have the two chicken broccoli cheddar. I got that all mixed up, but you know what I mean. <laughs> They're right here. And then I put the French toast on top and right down here I have my two things of chili and then I will take you to my outside freezer right now this fridge is the best fridge my husband got this when he was in college from two girls who were moving out and they didn't want it this has to be like a 20 plus some year old fridge and it is the best fridge ever in the freezer I had to kind of move things around to make it fit I have here the two lasagnas I think some breakfast sandwiches I have, there's a bunch of burritos back here that my boys will eat up. Though they're not part of the freezer meal plan, but just thought I'd mention it. I have more breakfast sandwiches. I think those are the enchiladas down here. I have all the muffins in here, blueberry muffins and the cornbread muffins right here. And then this is the ham and cheese sliders. So I think I got everything in here. There's also some tri-tips frozen in here. Several pounds of ground beef. I also have some chicken breasts back behind the beef and up here as well. So we are pretty much set. I have one loaf of bread in here and then my mom took two more loaves home to put in her freezer. And then the non bread that I got from that Costco haul is in here. So we are pretty much loaded and set up so that nobody will need to go anywhere and buy anything. Looks good and I'm proud of it. And that is a wrap on this video. I hope you liked it. I hope this gives you ideas for if you are having a baby soon or if maybe you're having an upcoming surgery or something that you're gonna be down for the count and you wanna have some meals available for you and your family. I'll link everything in the description box plus any modifications that I made for the recipes because I do that all the time. So I will link everything and write everything down for you. And I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. I don't mind.